Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, July 10th, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London. In Mexico City, it's 9.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, um, the 114-day Battle of Britain began, an aerial onslaught attempt by the Luftwaffe to bring Britain to its knees. It ended in late October uh, when Winston Churchill uttered his memorable phrase in the then-destroyed House of Commons, saying, Never in the field of human endeavors has so much been owed to so few, referring to the uh, Spitfire and Hurricane pilots. President Obama is uh, in Rome right now where he's uh, meeting with uh, Pope Benedict. He has his wife with him and his two daughters, and then he's leaving Da Vinci Airport uh, shortly to head to Accra, Ghana. Tomorrow he will address the Ghanaian Parliament and then uh, later in the evening fly home to Washington. Well, we should have a drum roll, but we don't, but uh, it's akin to that. We finally have a winner in the IPC re battle. And, as predicted, Ed Noonan always gets his man. Validus has won the battle to acquire IPC Reed down in Bermuda. The uh, announcement is going to end up forming a $3.7 billion combined company. IPC accepted an approved offer from Validus of $7.50 a share, plus about one full share of Validus stock. The bid then values IPC at $29.48 which is 6.8% more than the close on Wednesday in New York. You might remember that in March, Validus started a hostile bid for IPC. It upset Max Capital Group's uh, plans to merge with IPC. During months of wrangling, Validus revised its bid on a number of occasions as it tried to get IPC out of the Max deal. Yesterday in a conference call with Mr. Noonan, questions were raised by analysts as to whether Validus had enough of a capital cushion to get through the impending hurricane season in light of the sweetened deal. Noonan denied that the company had ever said that it was capital constrained. He emphasized that while other companies had dipped in the red following the financial crisis, Validus had made a profit. He said that Validus had taken the decision not to increase its aggregates for reasons of prudence. The chief financial officer, Jeff Consolino, said that Validens had made a prudent decision in agreeing to buy IPC and said, we do not think we have strained our balance sheet. Validens said that the $50 million breakup fee to Max Capital after Max was forced to pull out of its merger with IPC in March has already been paid. Noonan said that the IPC acquisition would make Validens one of the biggest players in the global short-tail market at a moment in time when size is important. The, uh, one of the suitors who was remaining here, of course, was uh, Flagstone, which uh, jumped in uh, a little bit ago, also pursuing uh, IPC. And Flagstone Chairman Mark Byrne, pictured here, said he was, quote, surprised and disappointed that the board of IPC re had selected the offer from Validus above Flagstone's $1.88 billion U.S. proposal for the company. The Validus bid was $1.7 billion. Uh, Flagstone unexpectedly jumped into the fray last week. Burns said that he believed the Flagstone deal, quote, offered superior economics in the short term and better prospects in the long term. And the gentleman to the end, Mr. Burns said, quote, as we close the file on this matter, we wish the board, shareholders, and employees of IPC well. And thus ends one of the most interesting and contentious kinds of merger battles and acquisition. It's something that should be uh, lifted right out and taught in law schools and corporate law. It really was something. Here's something else that's really something. This was what the Washington Post began to report last night at about midnight. Believe it or not, AIG is asking the federal government to weigh in on their plan to resume paying millions of dollars in proposed retention bonuses. AIG has asked the Obama administration's compensation czar, Kenneth Feinberg, to approve the payments in order to head off any public outrage. While the company is not required to get the government's blessing because the payments are actually for employment contracts dating back to 2008, AIG is reluctant to move forward with the bonuses without official approval. Well, that's pretty smart. Mr. Feinberg has the power to reject pay plans he deems excessive at companies which benefited from large infusions of money from the government. Feinberg also has authority to review compensation for the top 100 salaried employees of those companies. 
AIG is among the companies whose pay practices the government now oversees. That's to put it mildly, since the government aid to AIG totals about $180 billion. Here's some other reinsurance news. Actually, this is insurance news. Jardine Lloyd Thompson, the London-based broker, has hired Jonathan Palmer Brown to join Jardine's group executive committee. Palmer Brown, who is also uh, chairman of the uh, London Market Group, the, uh, in London Insurance, in the London International Insurance Brokers Association, is most recently the uh, um, deputy chairman of Aon Limited in London. His departure from Aon comes as Aon looks to restructure its UK London operations. Uh, we spoke earlier in the week how Rob Brown is going to take over that business, and we had a couple of quotes from Mr. Brown. Uh, Palmer Brown uh, has worked in London for many years. He's also active on the London Market Reform Group. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Another interesting news coming from London, Lloyd's is actually undertaking a major strategic review that will define its 2010 business planning and which will be in place when Tom Bolt, the former uh, Berkshire Hathaway executive, formally takes over as head of underwriting next year. Leading the Lloyd's team is his general counsel, Sean McGovern, uh, who we've interviewed a number of times. Uh, McGovern is one of the driving forces, and uh, he's going to be working with the professional advisory firm Deloitte. Deloitte is assisting uh, Lloyd's on the review. According to one source, the review is very wide-ranging in scale, and it's aiming at many of the institution's basic assumptions, such as what is Lloyd's for? What is the corporation for? What business should Lloyd's write? Where should this business come from? These are the kind of questions that the review seeks to answer, according to one Lloyd's insider. It's going to be uh, very revealing in some ways. The stock market's down about 80 points right now, and um, there's no breaking news this second. We'll go to a word from our sponsors and come back with the rest of the news. Pretty good sized earthquake in China forcing the relocation of more than 400,000 people in the southwestern part of the country.